We're recording? Okay, we're recording. Awesome. All right. Well, welcome back to another tutorial of RPG Maker 2003. I guess it's been a bit of a while since I last spoke on uh, uh, topics. I've been fairly busy with my game, and I feel like I've gone from basically amateur to, to full pro, which is really cool in a matter of uh, months, but... You know, I have been spending maybe six hours a day trying to build this game, which is pretty cool. And I've found a lot of things through online tutorials. Uh, I think I posted links of better, <laughs> more shorter versions of the things that I have to say. I feel like uh, watching one of my tutorials is like a, like a, a medicine and you know, if you can power through 20 minutes or 30 minutes, you'll get something really valuable out of it to the end, which is awesome. Um, I'm really uh, proud of the last uh, Caterpillar video, um, and you can add as many people as you want. Um, I also checked the formation. You, if you change uh, formation in, in your escape command too on the menu, you can have uh, the characters change positions, which is nice. A uh, really awesome feature, and it, it'll feel just like a brand new RPG Maker uh, MV game. But I, I have yet to, to dive into that one specifically. I'm sort of just going to do one game for each platform, you know, one at a time, and uh, just make different, uh, different game scenarios or a different world or a different, uh, different story. Yeah, different story. This one is very specific. So anyways, um, I'm going to talk to you today about uh, conditional branches, control switches, and variables. And we're going to look at that through breakable objects, which is really cool. Um, we're going to start to get slightly more advanced. So what I'm going to demonstrate is uh, the character selecting an object that they can't break. And then once they got the right item equipped then they're going to break it so uh, let me just pull up the um, the game here you can see how far I've, I've, I've come along which is kind of cool all right so those are my characters and there's uh, the, the the caterpillar perfection so I walk over here and there's uh oh there's a fence I can't go through it right I'm, I'm stopped and if I click on the fence it says Try equipping the wood chipper first, because it's going to cut down the fence. Press sel escape, select the character accessory, and then select the item. So previous, before this, the character just received the um, the equipment to do this. So I press equipment, and I can equip it to any one of the characters, because that's one of the tips. And I click on a character. They've got... <laughs> Um, their, uh, their wep- their, uh, yeah, weapon shields. But that's all, like, you know, I'm not gonna give them any different things, because it's not that kind of game. Anyways, uh, accessory, which is where they- they change the things that they need. Um, I'm gonna select the wood chipper, and there we go. Uh, Island Girl now has the wood chipper. And they- and it's no longer there, but, um, other characters can equip- other things for the island as as needed um, so once that's been equipped uh, the dialogue's gonna change oh oops did it work on this one okay we're in trouble <laughs> um, okay I don't want to uh, change the uh, I don't want to delete this video and start all over again. Trust me, I've I've tried a few takes. So let's <laughs> let's work with this. Um, okay, so basically, um, And this is this is what we we do as uh, video game developers is consistently check and uh, have embarrassing moments 
Uh, I'm gonna try the wood chipper on all of them, see what happens. Okay, there we go. So, I, 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 I know the problem. I, as soon as I saw it, I, I, I can tell you what the problem is. But we'll, I'll try and fix it later. Anyways, uh, so it works with um, Samuel. And um, why it works just with Samuel. There you go. And I say it won't go. Or I say cut it down. And then I can walk through it. Okay. Alright, so enough of that. Let's let's get to the code. I was looking at it briefly. So I'll explain what I what I'm going to fix and what was done wrong, but also what's important for this uh, conditional branch. So let's look at this one at a time. So when the character gets the wood chipper, I say that uh, when the wood chipper exists and the wood chipper is on because it's now a function, uh, the game wants to check to see that the wood chipper is in the inventory. It's now a switch. So when I'd received the, the wood chipper, I was given it and that switch turns on and that'll change versus this text. If you had come to the gate before you received the wood chipper, you would have said, hey, a fence, it's too big. I'm going to need to find something. But now we found something. So uh, the wood chipper does exist and I've made it a switch. So only does this ha uh, happen when it's on. So action button, same as characters, uh, for vid, event, overlap. Now I, I go to conditional branch and I say when wood chipper is in inventory. So you can... Uh, find conditional branch by uh, going to the second part saying wood chippers in inventory. And if you want me to locate it for you, it's on the third uh, page uh, on the fifth button. So you want to do that. Then you uh, add within that, um, it checks to see if Samuel has the wood chipper equipped. So you want to go down to actor, select your actor, and um, under the condition, you want to click its item and whether it's been equipped. There's other th it, it, conditional branches are so, so important. They're uh, very much like um, variables and switches. And once you like master those three things, you can build a serious, serious video game. So. Uh, I'm glad I'm able to cover uh, destroyable objects in this through conditional branches. So you you click on the item, and I have all my my items. You find the item that you've you've made in your uh, 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 what, whatever you call it, and you equip it. Okay, so now we're making a uh, like an if or else statement if the wood chipper has been equipped. So Samuel's first, and I'll tell you why it didn't work with the others in a minute. So now that it checks to see that it's been equipped to Samuel, it says, hey, this wood chipper could be real handy to destroy this fence to pieces. And then what you just saw was I gave the, the um, so I, I wrote a text, text box, um, then I gave uh, the choice the, the choices uh, function. So you know that that um, I whatever. I'm sure you guys know where this is. So show choices and then uh, from this if statement, if you say that you're gonna cut it down, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put on a switch or create a switch. Um, which is in this uh, s switches right below uh, so show choices and input number. And we're going to turn it on. And what that does, and it's uh, very important to label your switches, that, that you want this object to be removed. So you click on sign to destroy <laughs> is on, which is going to be this graphic, right? We have this graphic. Um, which is still this graphic. And we have a little sword effect sound that we make, um, which is what you heard. And once that 
switch is on, we make another page. So 382 sign to destroy, 382 sign to destroy. So we click on new page, then we click when this switch 382 sign to destroy is on, two things happen. So we have a parallel process, which means the difference between an auto run and a parallel process is a parallel process is like an auto run, except uh, you're in control of things that are happening in real time, like an auto run. An auto, an auto run, however, is when you program the characters to move and you can't do anything about it. So this, this is what happens in the background. So you want to click on parallel process uh, below the characters. And here you want to make sure the graph graphic is now empty. So to do that, you want to click on tell set one that, and then hit okay. And uh, you want to um, make sure that whatever move you want to set a move route, and this is important. So you want to click on insert uh, second, second page set move route. And then you're going to find the event that you've made. And this is fence path two. I haven't, I haven't, uh, tweaked it. Uh, but you're going to want to match this, uh, your, uh, event with the name here. And what through on, which is right here means essentially is, uh, the character can just walk right over the, uh, event and it's now invisible. So you find that and then you click OK. And I have it as fence path one. I can try and find fence path two. Uh, I have a lot of events, which I, you can see I've, I've, I've labeled very specifically, like one, two, three, four, puddle two, puddle one. Uh, some of these aren't perfect. Like I, I can start editing that. But anyways. Uh, there's fence path one. I may have skipped over fence path two. I don't know. Oh, there it is. Okay. And I'm going to click through on, hit OK. Get rid of this. And I should be able to move through that other fence path, which is awesome. I hit apply and OK. And uh, essentially, you've got yourself a breakable uh if you have a single character, all you need is this line of code. Um, now I have multiple characters, and as you can see, there is a a uh, half of a problem. Um, the reason why it didn't give me this text and that it showed up as nothing is, or sorry, this text, the the else text, is because I only gave it to Samuel. But I didn't give it to um, uh, th the other characters, so th I've you know I've copy and pasted the exact same code for each uh, character. Uh, the only difference is is um, they don't have a uh, the same else statement that it has to do with uh, this because they're not connected. Um, so that's what this is all down here. It's just going to show up blank. So what I'm going to do to fix that, maybe I can show you this right now, is take this. See, we, we all make we all we all make mistakes. Um, and we're going to put it down here as the final condition. Let's see if this works. And we're going to take this and move it into the conditional branch. So it, it checks, okay, if he has it equipped, go. Else if uh, the other character has it equipped, uh, go. And then, um, oh, move this. Oh, nope. All right, I can get this out of the way. Um, cut. I think it will go there. Um, else that. And then else, oh crap, and then else that. So conditional else, else, else. And then if it doesn't meet any of those expectations, there we go. And that's another important thing with code is that it has to check each condition one at a time, you know? Um, so 
I'm going to hit apply. That's fun. You got to see me do some a little bit of work there and hit OK. And that was fence path two. Then I'm going to just delete this. And what the nice thing you, you can do is you can copy it and move it up here. Rename this fence path one. I hit apply. And then all I have to do is change fence path two to fence path one. And if I can find it, because uh, there isn't going to be any other fence path one, right? Uh, oh, was that it? No. I feel like I've, I've gone too far. Let me go back down. <laughs> um, fence path two, fence path 11. Um... I'm fairly certain that you can also just select um, this event and then just do through on. If if you're having trouble locating it, I like to be very specific, but um, you can just do that as a, a nice workaround. So I'm going to hit apply, hit OK, and we're going to see if that makes a difference. So we'll, we'll check that and uh, that'll be the end of the tutorial. Oh, it's a short one. It's only 16 minutes. <laughs> hey, new record. <clears throat> All right. All right, so we've got our things. I think we got it. So that's that'll check for anyone, right? Um, now it's no longer just checking for Samuel. So we equip it to... What's this? There you go. See, I got this. Uh, and we can unequip it and we know it'll happen, but we can try equipping it to Jess now or the Island girl. I just call her Jess and yep. See, and can I walk through? I can walk through both. So there you go. All right. I, that's the, um, I'll exit out of this, um, that's the end of the uh, tutorial for uh, conditional branches, switches, uh, and um, destroyable objects. And that was the, uh, the lesson here, which is uh, destroying an object and uh, making, making it go away for forever uh, with an item uh, equipped. All right. Um, I'll see you guys in the next one. I hope this was helpful and I'll sign off. Peace.